So let's move in the opposite direction. How do we deal with things when the tree that you want to measure is located downslope? How do we determine height in that case? Well, the fundamentals haven't changed. We still need to determine our horizontal distance from the tree along with the portion of the tree occupying our clinometer's percent scale. We'll sti we still need to collect those two pieces of information. Last time, when the tree was upslope, if we wanted to directly measure that horizontal distance, we would have needed to dig into the slope itself. Here, if we want to measure horizontal distance, we would need to magically float in the air. But I'm not David Blaine or any other magician, so I can't float in the air. So we can't measure that directly. But what we're going to do as well as last time is we're going to measure the ground distance. Walking down slope to the tree itself, measuring that distance and then measuring what's called our angle of depression. That's going to allow us to measure or determine that horizontal distance. So let's do that. Okay, well we had to extend that measuring tape a couple of times, but what I found was that the distance between me and the tree was 220 feet. Again, we could have measured that via pacing as well. So in order to determine horizontal distance, we need to refer again to our right triangle. As you can see from that right triangle, we have our horizontal distance between us and the tree itself. So more or less, I'd be pointing up towards where the leader of that tree is. That's a straight line distance. That's one side of our right triangle. Just like as before, our ground distance that I just finished walking is our hypotenuse. That's the hypotenuse of our right triangle. So in order to determine the horizontal distance, I need to work once again with the cosine function. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be equal to our horizontal distance over our ground distance. I just measured our ground distance, 220 feet. I need to figure out what cosine of our angle of depression is. So let's measure that angle of depression. Just like before, in order to parallel the hypotenuse, I need to create a parallel line between the clinometer and the tree itself. So I place some orange flagging tape where my head would reside if I were standing right next to the tree. Focusing on that and using my degree scale on my clinometer, I can see that the angle of depression is 11 degrees. So if our angle of depression is 11 degrees, what's cosine of 11 degrees? Well, we can refer to our clinometer again with the handy cosine table that's found on the side. Cosine of 11 degrees is equal to 0.9816. And from our cosine function, in order to determine our horizontal distance, I need to multiply my ground distance by 0.9816. So 0.9816 multiplied by 220, that's going to give us 215.9 or roughly 216 feet. Not a dramatic difference from our horizontal distance and our ground distance, but that difference becomes greater when you work with steeper slopes. So we've collected one vital piece of information. We have our horizontal distance. All we have to do now is get our percent reading. Again, the portion of this tree that occupies our clinometer's percent scale. So looking at the percent scale on our clinometer, if you zero things out, if you take that horizontal black line and line up the zeros, you're going to wind up collecting two percentage readings because you have to go down to the bottom of the tree and you have to go slightly up to reach the top of the tree or the leader. So I have two readings I'm collecting. The bottom of the tree corresponds with a reading of 20%. Going up in the opposite direction, we go to the other side of that percent scale and I get a reading of 2%. A lot of times when you're working with trees on a slope, especially when trees are down slope, you're going to be adding two percentages together because you have to go in two opposite directions on the percent scale. So in our case, we're simply going to add those two numbers together, 20 
and two, and that gives us 22%. So from our chronometer's percent scale, I obtain a reading of 22%. So we need to divide that by 100 to convert it to its corresponding decimal, so 0 0.22. So we need to multiply 0 0.22 by 216, which is our horizontal distance. Multiply those both together, 216 multiplied by 0 0.22 gives us 47.5 feet. If we wanted to round to the nearest foot, that would give us 48 feet. So this tree found downslope from us is roughly 48 feet high.